Yo, what's up? Kane Corso family, this is Saladin Salon for Kane Corso, kind of depressor and Neapolitan man. Stino historical talk. What's going on? Hopefully, y'all having a lovely day. Me, I'm off from work, so I'm gonna make a video, which is cool. But anyway, yo, what's up? I'm gonna talk about Kane Corso's and current events that's happening now. So, uh, this is primarily my advice, right? Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because. Hey, it is what it is. This is my opinion on the matter. Now, a lot of you still just don't get it. You're still looking, the breed pedigrees, the pedigrees. You're not actually looking at the aspect that, one, all the dogs you're producing are traditional. But a lot of you don't even care. Like, that's the truth of the matter. You don't care. I spoke to a lot of dog trainers and et cetera, right? Everybody agreed that a lot of the Corso's temperament has changed. People blame the show breeders. Show breeders blame, you know, the backyard breeders. It's just a blaming game. And it's, it's really corny at the end of the day. This is the actual fact of the matter. And I'm going to tell you, like I said, my opinion, my spin, and try to give you the facts. But okay, bottom line is this. In dog breeding, you're going to get a whole bunch of traits, right? You're going to get good traits, bad traits, etc. Now... You know, a lot of dog trainers said, well, yo, I don't give a damn about the appearance of the dog. Long as the dog is healthy and long as the dog can, can function and do what it's supposed to do. Okay, granted. But at the end of the day, I can't re I've respect it and can't respect it. The reason why I can't fully respect it, because at the end of the day, then you're still not breeding the best specimen that you can get your hands on. Now, my name is not on the aspect of a, a show breeder because, you know, a lot of these show breeders do the aspect of a fashion show. But on the aspect of ability to work, Corso is supposed to be, again, rectangular. It's supposed to have good angulation and it's supposed to gait and move like a cat. That's number one. That's number one. Head types could vary. Now, your temperament, the dog should be pretty confident. You know what I'm saying? It should be confident. It shouldn't be skittish. It shouldn't be scared to get touched. It shouldn't be where it doesn't want to engage in a, in a new situation. It should be pretty outgoing. These are the puppies that you should be selecting. And again, like I'm saying, top straight. I mean, basically, the more straight the top line is, the better. Watch your tail sets. And then again, watch your um your muzzle types and your and your breeds because if the puppies, I mean, when they babies, it's hard to tell. But again, look at the parents, look at the parents real sharply, and please know your bloodlines because if you buy a corso on the whim, a lot of these dog enthusiasts don't know, and what they're doing is selling you a pedigree. I'm gonna say this again: what they're doing is selling you a pedigree. So I don't know about the muzzles and all this and that and the third. So I sell you a puppy. And I'm telling you that, oh, well, you know, the mother and father are show champions. Just like on the aspect, let me bring it back a little further. I know a lot of shits in one corsos, right? Shits in three, et cetera. These corsos are shits in and or their type of ring type sport. Um, ring type sport title dogs. You breed these dogs. There's no consistency and temperament varies. You get one or two puppies that are working in that aspect, but everybody else is trash. So, so that stuff, it is what it is, man. And a lot of you, again, like, understand something. Now, a lot of the Italians did were bad jobs in dog breeding. So they bred any and every type of stuff in the dogs. So you get all these traits, you get all these different behavior patterns, and etc. And this is why, like I said, at the end of the day, it's very important that you know a lot of these dog enthusiasts, recovery breeders, etc. They didn't do the right thing. They didn't do the right thing by the breed. Not all, but the majority. You got a few select few that did do do the right thing, and this is why did the, the core souls is varying because again, you got all these dog traits, and again, these breeders because a lot of you keep buying this crap. Like, and you keep promoting that, and these show judges keep selecting the wrong corso. What I'm going to say with the wrong corso, if the corso doesn't look like a corso, it's not a corso. So, even though the pedigree is saying it, it's not a corso. It's not. 
Like, yo, so now you're going on the aspect of this breeder, you know what I'm saying? This guy, this guy, and he has this and he has that. Or this dog handler shows the dog and, yo, this stuff is crazy, man. And you're ruining the dogs, man. You're ruining them. So, again, yes, a new registry had to be made. Why? To correct the wrong. Because <laughs> there was a lot of wrong. There was a lot of misinformation that was given on the aspect of the history, the development of the dogs. And also, too, like I said, with color codes, temperament, types, and etc. Like, yo, a lot of you don't have corsos who have band dogs. <laughs> Here's what it is. And a lot of you, again, like, you're not going to... You're not going to get consistencies. You know why? Because you still have scattered bread stuff. The stuff that you're making your foundation on is scattered bread stuff. That stuff takes years to concrete and make stamp where all your puppies are looking the same. Straight up and down. Straight up and down. Straight up and down. Only time your dogs are supposed to vary is in size. That's it. One puppy is supposed to be bigger than the other. And there might be a little bit more bone mass. Then this, then another puppy. But over, overall, your dogs are supposed to look primarily the same on <laughs> some real stuff. There's no distinction. There's no well, yo, this one look like a corso. Damn, he kind of look bull mastery, and he looks boxery, and that one looks great Danish. It's not supposed to be like that. And a lot of your litters reflect that. Like for real, for real, a lot of your litters reflect that. And again, you're breeding the wrong type of corso. You're breeding hypercorso, and these are not traditional corsos. Again, sacks, and a lot of these recovery enthusiasts lie to you. And the lie is detrimental because now your temperament is varying. Also, your looks are varying, and also epilepsy is there because of the boxer influence or the barvel. Like, because now you send uh, all these other enthusiasts are trying to be slick. And they're breeding barvels into the dogs. Listen, again, you know, I can dig if your dog is neo-ish or Neapolitan looking. I can go with that. Not just because the Sicily bloodlines reflect that. Not just because of that. Because actually, like the history goes, the dogs were wanted the same. So if you get a call so that looks kind of neo-ish, all right. But if he's looking bull masterish, also with the boxerish, with the neo stuff, that's a band dog, and it's wrong, man. Your dog shouldn't have a real short muzzle, man. Your dog shouldn't have a real big head with a short muzzle. That's telling me that your dog is not going to be able to breathe when it's hot outside. Oh, it's not going to be able to function protecting you. Yeah, it'll look imposing and, and you know threatening, but again. You got a lot of criminals now are being wise and smart. And they'll try your dog. And your dog better be able to defend you. Because if it's not, then the dog is in trouble. And guess who else is in trouble? So what's the sense of having it? A big hundred and a pound something and you got to protect your dog? That's crazy. And again, like I said, the temperaments of the dogs are varying. The reason being because nobody's doing this thing properly, man. Properly. Again, if you're going to concrete and get, you just can't. Like, listen, man. Your, your breeding program has to be founded on some good stuff. Not scatterbred stuff, man. Because if it is, your temperament is going to vary, man. This is why. I'm going to say this. And I got to. Put it out there blatantly so we can have an understanding. Band dogs, right? Band dog breeding is based on this. Now, go back, get a uh, Carl Semitic book, and read it. And he would explain that the best of the best pit bulls, pit bull stock, was put upon the best of the best neo stock, Neapolitan stock. The reason being because you put the best of the best together and you get all springs that are that. So now the best of the best and you keep going forward, right? And you're not deviating from the best of the best. Guess what? Then your temperament doesn't vary. And now if you need an outcross, you still bring in a good hard dog and put in and then still go forward. And it's that simple. But if I got scatterbred stuff and I got that first generation high vigor, 
Doesn't mean that second, third, fourth, and fifth generation are still going to be higher vigor. The numbers are going to go down. And so, like I said, with puppy selection, the numbers go down, and it is what it is. But now, if it was scattered bread from the gate, then there's no concrete. You know what I'm saying? There's no foundation there. There's no foundation there. And this is all about a part of being a good breeder. You have to know what you're doing, man. You have to know what you're doing. A lot of you just want to breed corsos to breed corsos to make money, to get a little fortune, or to get a little name for yourself. And none of you dudes and people or enthusiasts are doing this thing correctly. Some are. A lot aren't. Because, again, it's reflecting in your breeding programs. You just don't know. And you need to know. You need to get founded. You need to get some foundation underneath your feet. Not on the aspect of, yo, man, well, I got this dog, and it came from that, and this guy breeds good dogs. Yeah, he breeds some good dogs. All of us, as dog breeders, dog enthusiasts, whatever, you're not going to make a perfect corso all the time. There's going to be flaws in every litter that's born, man. Every litter, man. Some are better than others, but there's going to be flaws. There's going to be flaws. There's going to be flaws. But the thing is... You know, culling out of your programs, man. Certain dogs, you, sh you sh need not to sell. Or if you're going to sell, listen, man, I'm going to give you this. It's a pup puppy, pet puppy price. You can't breed the dog. And to otherwise. Because again, too, Corsos grow funny. So it might have been crappy as a baby. Grew up and he's a nice ass dog. Not just in looks, but as far as in temperament also, too. Because you got to know what you're doing. That's why the Corso is not for everybody. That's why the Corso is not for everybody. It's a hands-on dog. It's not meant to be a lap dog. It's not, I'm going to say that again. It's not meant to be a lap dog. And the way these dogs should be bred, they're not being bred that way because a lot of people are afraid, so to speak. Or, like I said at the end of the day, you can't handle that octane that these dogs really possess. And they really don't really possess that much octane. You know what I'm saying? It's just... A good farm utility dog is a working dog. So any any breed that's dealing with work, you have to put in work. It's a hands-on thing. But a lot of you, again, you don't have the expertise and you don't go get help. You don't. You take advice from puppy pushers, puppy millers, and etc. that give you wrong advice, wrong information, and none of this stuff you try to confirm to make sure that they're telling you the truth. Really, like for real, you can't make this stuff up, man. The Corso is in bad shape. It's on its direction to be changed around into the positive direction. You know what I'm saying? Thanks to myself. I got to say that. Thanks to myself because I put a lot of fire underneath the mainstream breeders on some real stuff worldwide. You know, everybody said I was a joke in the Corso world, etc. Don't listen to him. He's an ass clown, etc. This and that and the third. You'd be surprised how many mainstream breeders listen and hear what the hell I have to say. Because at the end of the day, like, I'm not affiliated. Well, no, I'll take that back. Now I am. But before, I wasn't affiliated with no other registries, clubs, etc. I was given the facts. Still going to give the facts up. Nothing has changed. I'm going to give the facts up. And it is what it is, man. And, I'm, yo, hopefully in the beginning of March, we're going to talk about epilepsy. That's going to be a very controversy discussion. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm seeing a lot of enthusiasts still not talking about it or refuse to talk about it because they were a part of that. And what I'm saying with that is, hold on, let me do a part two.